Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. Today I'm really really happy to bring you one of the most awaited videos on this channel, which is the Ryzen 5 2600 vs Ryzen 5 3600. So AMD recently released uh, the new Ryzen 3000 generation, which includes for example the Ryzen 5 3600, the Ryzen 5 3600X, the 3700 and the X version, the 3800X, which doesn't exist on the, the 800X version, doesn't exist on the second generation, so only exists the 1800 and the 3800. So another new thing per se and we have the Ryzen 9 3900X which is 12 cores and 24 threads on the, the main socket AM4. Beautiful. Anyway the thing is many people are thinking is it really really worth the upgrade for example from Ryzen 5 2600 to Ryzen 5 3600? Okay the Ryzen 5 2600 now costs $139 in most of stores, okay. And we have the Ryzen 5 3600 costing only $199 at launch. And the things did change a lot on the Ryzen 5 uh, 3000 generations. For example, the Ryzen 5 2600 has, for example, uh, 19 megabytes, yes, 19 megabytes of total cache. And for example, the Ryzen 5 3600 has 36, sorry if I'm wrong. <laughs> No. 36 megabytes of cache. This is only one of the many things that changed. One thing is, for example, the node. It's seven nanometer cores. Um, yes, yeah, seven nanometer cores versus uh, 12 nanometer cores on the 2600. We have many different things. For example, the chiplets. Now we have the cores, and we have a chiplet only caring for, for example, input and output of the data. Um, things weren't working this way. And for example, you now can run way higher um, way higher RAM speed, for example, 3600 is the common, 3600 MHz is the common. On the previous generations, it was quite hard to achieve it. Uh, so now it is the common and you can reach, for example, 4000 MHz. Not that it is worth, but uh, anyway, I'll do a video about it. So guys, sorry for the long intro, but I really needed to explain a few things. Um, but without any further delays, don't forget, hit like, subscribe, share the video, Leave a comment on the comment section and tell me what you think about this video. And let's now go to the part that you really want to see, the benchmarks. See you in the conclusion. So, for this test I picked some games where I know that CPUs usually bottleneck even at 1080p, with a GPU as strong as my Vega 56. The first of those games is Assassin's Creed Origins. As can be seen, the FPS difference is massive, even with both CPUs using the same RAM speeds and timings. At 1080p we see a difference of around 16 FPS in average, but that is not the most noticeable difference. The game felt way smoother on the Ryzen 5 3600, and that was due to the massive difference in the 1% lows. We have 66.5 FPS on the Ryzen 5 3600, while on Ryzen 5 2600 it can go as low as 50 FPS, and that will make the game stutter.
The second game tested is Far Cry 5, which is also known to run pretty badly on Ryzen CPUs. Well, that changed a bit. Even on this benchmark the difference is pretty noticeable at 1080p, having 10 FPS difference in averages and 1% lows. 1% lows are really, really important. The higher they are, the smoother the game will feel. In real-world gaming the difference was easily noticed. Some parts where Ryzen 5 2600 did around 85 FPS, Ryzen 5 3600 was pushing around 120. And that is very good in my opinion. Now we have PUBG using the replay feature. Before anything, just let me tell you that the replay feature does not represent the real in-game FPS. This because it reduces the FPS numbers considerably. As for the results, we can see a mild increase in the average FPS numbers. As for the 1% lows, take them with a grain of salt, since we are using the replay feature. Overall, pretty decent results. Now with CSGO, a game that heavily relies on single core performance. And holy shit, the difference is huge. We are talking of 130 FPS average, meaning that in some parts the difference will be even bigger. These results were easily explained when I was running ADA64 benchmark and saw the insane L1 cache speed. We are talking of around 700 gigabytes on Ryzen 5 2600 versus 1500 gigabytes on the Ryzen 5 3600. These results are great and even at 4K we can see a pretty decent increase of around 30 average FPS. Moving on. This time it is Rainbow Six Siege. Since I know Rainbow Six Siege heavily relies on the GPU side, I thought the results wouldn't differ much. And I wasn't wrong. The difference is between 10 and 15 FPS and somehow I got a bit worse results at 1440p and 21p on the Ryzen 5 3600. Still pretty decent results and I am pretty sure those numbers will come up once I put my X570 Strix motherboard. The last game tested today is still one of the most played games nowadays, Dota 2. In where we can see a clear advantage of the Ryzen 5 3600 over the Ryzen 5 2600. The 1% lows didn't change much, but average surely got affected. We got a boost of around 40 FPS at 1080p and around 15 FPS at 1440p. The difference was easily noticed on gaming, since the FPS were rarely below 300 FPS mark. Moving on. To finish the benchmarking, we have Cinebench R15 test. We can clearly see how superior the Ryzen 5 3600 is. 
single core performance is now on par with Intel i7 8700K at stock settings, which is pretty damn good. As for the multi-core performance, it is even a bigger jump than expected, 272 points difference with only 100 MHz more and at the same release price as Ryzen 5 2600. This is what I call a great deal. Let's move to the conclusion. So guys, concluding, is it worth to upgrade for the, from the Ryzen 2600 to the Ryzen 3600? Well, in my opinion, my own and only that, my own opinion, it is worth the upgrade. Let me tell you, in some games, the difference is huge. In some games, um, the, the CPU was really, really bottlenecking. For example, Assassin's Creed Origins. If you, for example, like to play CSGO in a more competitive way, then an upgrade is a must. Because, for example, in I tested also in in competitive games, and while the Ryzen, the Ryzen 5 2600... <laughs> A few moments later... While the Ryzen 5 2600 was, for example, having drops to lower than 250 FPS, the Ryzen 5 3600 doesn't go below 300 FPS, which is really, really good in some parts. For example, for example it jumps from, let's say, 400 FPS on the Ryzen 5 2600 to 700 or 800 FPS, the difference is massive. And in some games, for example, uh, also like Dota, the difference in FPS, while, for example, CPU-wise, is huge. That also because of the single core performance, which can be seen, for example, on Cinebench R15, which is huge, from 171 with 3200 MHz RAMs to 197. So the difference is quite big. Um, and well, with Ryzen 5 3600, you don't really need um, super mega, duper high MHz RAMs because the difference will be quite smaller, uh, not quite smaller, quite small compared to the previous generations. But well, in the end, it all comes to what you want to buy. If I was one of the buyers, the new computer buyer, so I don't have a computer and I want to buy a computer, okay, uh, a Ryzen 5 3600 is a must. Is a must really. Don't go to the 1600, don't go to the 2600 unless you really want a cheap, a very cheap machine. So if you are playing, for example, at 1080p, you have a mid and um, a mid and, for example, GPU, okay, uh, put that $70 or $80 and put into a better GPU, okay, maybe, it depends on the settings you play, but really, really, in my opinion, Ryzen 3600 is the best, uh, the best your money can buy at $200. That's also, pick that CPU and pick, for example, uh, picking you a mid and GPU, for example, a GTX um, 1660, uh, for example, a Vega 56, or even a higher end GPU, you'll be completely fine because the CPU will handle the GPU unlike the previous generations, in most cases, of course. And that's all, guys. If you like this kind of videos, don't forget, watch also these videos. All the links are in the description. I have a lot of videos of CPU comparisons. I have videos of um, a RAM test, for example, several frequencies uh, with different lat latencies. Uh, I have a lot of tests, so most of these videos may interest you. So go to the link in the description because you want to see them. Just to end, the channel was recently, um, image, the image of the channel uh, was recently redesigned and we now have this, uh, which is, I think, in my opinion, is quite better than before. It's like to, um, to congratulate, the, to celebrate, yeah, that's the right word, to celebrate the 15,000 subscribers on this channel, so thanks a lot, guys. I'll be making a special video soon. Uh, really, thanks a lot for being here. Thanks a lot. I when I when I make when I made this channel, I I didn't expect it to fuck fucking English. I I didn't expect it to to go so much further, so high. For example, fifteen thousand subscribers is almost nothing comparing to other channels. But for me, it means really a lot, and I know that the people that subscribe my channel really enjoy my videos. So thanks a lot for being here. One more time. A special episode is coming. That's all for today, guys. One more time. Hit like, subscribe and share the video because that really helps the channel a lot. By channel, I mean me because I'm the only one working on this channel. 
Um, <laughs> but anyway, thanks a lot. And also, don't forget, leave a comment on the comment section. That is very important. And if you are watching this part of the video, thanks a lot. Leave a comment saying that, that you are watching the final part. Because that means a lot to me. Thanks, guys. And see you in the next video.